Streaming. <laughs> Live stream. Hello, everybody. Uh, hi. What are we hearing, hearing right now, Nigel? This. Ah, okay. So these days, for some reason, I'm preferring the neck pickup for soloing. I just always gravitate towards it. Check this out. I put it over to the bridge. It's good, but for some reason I like the deep tones that I get from the uh, neck pickup. So what I'm going to do today <clears throat> is uh, it's totally unadorned and unrehearsed and unpolished and might be some surprises. We'll see. I did a test the other day of a live stream and it went so well that I thought I'd just dive in and try it. So I have a piece of music here that I created for Pete Thorne. He came over to do, uh, you know, a visit for my channel, which will be out in a couple of weeks, and I wanted him to have a piece of music. So there was something laying around that Nigel had made for me, uh, a drum beat based on Born Under a Bad Sign, which you'll, I think you can recognize it right here. So the inspiration for this is... <laughs> Check out this drum part. It's pretty amazing what Ginger Baker did. This is a, um, Nigel made this. It's a, you know. Pretty inventive drum part for a simple blues song. So hats off to Ginger Baker for that. Okay, I'm going to unmute group one. Now this is where we get into the, the thick of what's really happening here, is me trying to manage this in real time in front of all you lovely people. Hello everybody, I'm looking over here on my iPad. Thanks Kyle, thanks for showing up everybody. Ooh, yeah. Oh, thank you guys. Oh, very nice, very nice to have you all along this morning. Okay, so this is a track I created for Pete's visit. And it, it turned out kind of cool. I'll explain it to you. <laughs> That's me unsoloing everything. So let's start over. <laughs> See how this sounds. I know, I know what to do here. Okay, I'm muting those. Okay, I'm going to ungroup my groups and go back to single tasks. <laughs> Check it out. Now we have a drum part. Let's add the bass in. Okay. So what it is, it stays on E, and then I have this little turnaround that goes from C to G, and that happens here. So I'll unmute some of the guitars. I go 
from C to G. Oh, I gotta do input. <laughs> yeah, right. It goes from C to G, but I always like these major seventh intervals, so when I played the C, that would have been fine, but I had to go. And because it's not a session where somebody's paying me to go. I can be a little bit weird and go. Just step outside of whatever genre this is supposed to be. It doesn't have to be a genre because we're just doing it for the fun of it. Now that's another little piece that happens midway through. It's doubled as you can see. And then I go from C to G and I do the major seventh thing. And if I solo these, let's look at the effects on these two. Okay, now we're rolling. Vibrato uh, from this guy back here, if you can see it. Um, reverb probably from this guy. Delay. All right, so that makes them sound a little more mysterious, I'd say. Those repeat, and then I go to the B section of the song. Let's listen to that. I'm going to open up those tracks. Right here, let's see what we got. There's four of them. So what this is, just to add definition, we have simple eighth parts. And what's happening here is one track is dry and the other track has wobbly vibrato so that you hear them kind of rub against each other in stereo. Oh, let me solo them again. Here we go. <laughs> you guys are great, man. Thanks. Thanks so much for showing up for this. It's really pretty fun. Okay, so we have that in the B section, and then... This track is just for color because I did. I felt like there wasn't enough going on here. Well, both these tracks are. Let's listen to these. And the five chord turnaround. So when I put all this together on the B section, put this on input, I think I can play along. Okay, so that was the bridge pickup, and it sounded good to me. I actually liked it, so I'm kind of going against my original opinion there. This descending line, when I wrote it, something kind of interesting happened, I thought, because I kind of ran out of real estate. I wish there were another musical phrase I could squeeze in between. In other words, what I wish is this. That didn't sound musical, so what I had to do is repeat this. You know, I kind of wrote this really quickly. The, the nice thing about writing for YouTube and for friends and stuff like that, you can kind of just make it up as you go along, which I'm, I'm really enjoying that right now. Okay, let me go ahead and solo over this, this B section, and see what happens. Let's talk about how I would solo over that. You could either treat this That was not good. I chose to do kind of nah, Let me do another one. Let me get taste back into my playing instead of non-taste. Yeah, no need to try and be a genius on the five chord. Now, <laughs> let me try. I'll try and be 
try and play fast at the end. That guy. Hey, yeah. Can you turn your monitors down a teeny bit? Okay. Yeah. We're we getting the uh, the flam. We know just... people just want to hear more of your voice. So oh. Okay. Great. Yeah. Camera, camera yeah. mic, and you turn down your monitor. Okay. That's the key. So thank you for asking for what we need to give you, which is a better sound. Let's try this. Let me unmute this. That is so quiet, my mom and dad would like it. Is that good? What do you think? Let's see. What does everybody think? It is shockingly quiet. It's good. Good for me to play quiet. Too loud is too loud, and my ears have definitely suffered for it. Protect your ears. Okay. So one thing that I did after I created this thing, everything okay, Nigel? What do you think? Let me have a look at, actually, let me look over here. Yeah, sounds good. Hello, guys. Oh, man, so nice of all of you to join. Oh, I forgot to mention, there is a link below this video. We're doing a sale on the first year of the Masterclass. So it'll be up for 48 hours. It's, you still get the 14-day free trial, so you can opt out if you want, but it makes the first year a little bit less expensive. So check it out if you want. The link will be below this video until, you know, Sunday night or whatever. Okay, so one thing I did with this the other day, uh, I just quickly wrote a new song, and this will require me to do my group thing again, which hopefully will work. I'm going to mute everything except the drums. Let's see if I did that. Yep. And then let me unmute group two. Let's see what we got here. So the way this new song started, generally I like to play a real bass. It's super fun. But if I'm moving quickly, I will use my boss octaver. So I would dry this up, turning off the eventide eclipse, which is matched to the tempo of the song. It's always good. Got a pretty normal tone right there. Just a, I've got like six pedals over here that are overdrives. And at the end of this video, I'm going to pull this camera right here, this one, and I'm going to move it around and show you all the stuff that's in... That's how I'm going to end the video. I'm going to show you all the stuff that's sitting here. So I've got like six overdrives right here, so I can choose all these different natural overdrive sounds. And right now I have on the Super Sweet by Exotic Effects, and that's good. I'm going into the Divided by 13, which I use all the time for everything. Um, and then I'm going to turn on the octave pedal. To do that, I have to kind of look under here where it's coming up, and here we got it. Now you see I'm hitting Digital Red right there. I actually don't mind doing that, but my clients never like digital clipping, so... It's not really a part of any uh, any YouTube videos. They you know they don't say, do you like digital clip clipping? No, nobody does. So I'll have to reduce my signal here. See, I reduced my signal and it's still red. That happens to me all the time. Do I have to really turn it down that far? Ah. See, now it's really close. Ah. Okay, so what's going to happen here? I'm actually going to clean it up. I'll turn off the super sweet and put on the super clean, which is not another exotic effect. It's a little cleaner. If you... Are you okay over there, Nigel? Uh-huh. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, oh, my mantra, mantra today is not to touch my nose, because I... And I, don't, I think that's the first time I touched it. Not to swear, not to overshare. Um, what I like to do is put a little bit of a light push in front of the amp just to make it fatter. So here's the micro amp and the super sweet on. It kind of fattens it up. So I'm going to imitate a bass part for expediency. That way I don't have to take this guitar off and grab a bass. But the key with this thing is to make it sound really fat but always have the direct signal in because 
it hides any glitches, and it also gives you that point, because a lot of these devices have just a little bit of latency in them as they translate the sound into a new octave or whatever. So for me, you get that nice point on it by having the direct signal mixed in, and then I have both octaves on, too. Produce drawings of my studio signal flow. I think in the future, I'm just going to talk about it so much that you'll understand. And it's very, very unprofessional. I mean, it's just a medusa of cables that have been strung together over the years. I don't even know where they where these cables go anymore. I just know that it works. And if there's a problem, I can usually fix it, but... Ooh. Okay, so uh, what am I doing? Oh, I'm doing the bass. So I, this is a, I came up with a new part, and the way I did it was I came up with an extra part for the original song. I'm going to find that. Let's see if I can find it. Is this it? That's not it. Let's see. Here's one. That's it. Okay, so I came up with this part on the original song, and then I decided to come up with a bass part under it. And I will recreate that right here, right now. I think the safe way to do that is I'm going to keep the original, right? Duplicate the track with none of the audio, which is what I like, so it just ends up a duplicate, and it'll have the same volume, the same effects if I want it to. So I'll just mute that, and I'll do this bass part with the guitar and the octaver. Oh. I've turned off pre-roll, I'll put pre-roll back on. Always a fight to, you know, sometimes you want pre-roll, sometimes you don't. I want it right now, so I got it. Here we go. That's okay, because I can paste that last part. So the thing I like about this is it creates these new, you know, chord changes over a simple part. The other part was, you know, pretty much a E minor to A7, and this is totally different. Um, so now, let's look for some other parts. We'll keep that. I'm going to create a new track. Where will I create it? It's right here. Here's one for me. There we go. I'll turn the octaver off, which is down here on this loop switcher, off. Okay, let's see what we have. And see, this is where I want to turn the pre-roll off because I don't want to keep waiting now. I want to go right to the music. Okay, so in the creation of parts, I have a bass part. I have a kind of dreamy arpeggio, right? So what would I do next? I'll try a percolating funk part. And part of the, it's just the freedom of being, being able to make your own music. There's nobody here to tell me, no, we don't need that. Uh, I can, yeah, it's a boss octaver. And I'll, sh I'll show it to you at the end of the uh, thing. Needs a pog? I actually, I have, I, my pog is here. I'll put a pog on it in a second. How about that? Okay, so this is me trying to do the opposite of, I've, of what I've done, going to a different corner. I'm going to do something percussive and rhythmic. And these, th these parts are pretty easy for me to do. Something will pop out. Let's see if it's any good or not. Who knows? But I do want to get pre-roll back for this because uh, I need, you know, I, don't, I need a count. Here we go. <clears throat> Not good enough. I actually am losing the drums a little bit, Nigel. How can I turn up the drums? They're on an ox. Yeah, would you turn them up for me? 
Sure. Could be like 15 minutes if I try and find the drums and turn them. I mean, they're right there, but if I try and find them and turn them up in front of an audience, it could be like 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. Let's see what we got. Let me find the track I just played. The thing about that is I will play better now because the drums are louder. Because I was losing the drums. Oh, there I am. Uh, I was out of pocket a bit. The other thing, another trick I use for a part like this is I'll pan it all the way to one side, which it should be okay for you guys to hear. And that way makes it smaller. I mean, my favorite records of all time have one guitar on the left and one guitar on the right. And maybe it's two guitar players, and they're playing slightly different parts, and sometimes you don't hear the magic until you put on headphones. So when I'm creating parts, creating space for those parts is really important by taking your hands and going like this. No, it's it's making them hard left or hard right. And personally, I don't like panning that's anywhere in the middle. I'm kind of old school. I like drums in stereo, the vocal in the center, and I like to hear guitars either right or left just coming out of each speaker. But... <clears throat> Uh, I digress. Okay, pre-roll. Okay, it would be best if I had my hands on the guitar. Let's try that. I went to the right tonality at the end. That turned out pretty good. Uh, it's okay. I'll playlist it so it doesn't go away anywhere. Will I ever find it again? Probably not. Will I ever listen to it again? Probably not. I'm going to try a lower part and see if that works. There's a couple of things I want to mention. Uh, it always sounds great to not play. I mean, if I don't play, there's space for another part. Uh, and maybe I'll even play a little less on this, but I'm going to go down the octave. And then the other thing, there's the, a point where the, the bass part goes to F-sharp, and I don't exactly know how to play through that, so that's always a, a fun spot uh, on this. Okay, here, here we go. <clears throat> that is too loud. Why is it so loud? I'll turn it down. Maybe I'll take off one of these pedals right here. Here we go. soft so you got to keep adjusting the level until it sounds like a big huge fantastic famous record that everybody loves <laughs> mm -hmm. see that's where that F sharp is and I love it but I don't know exactly how to pay pay through it Pay for it? I think you guys are paying for it right now. Uh, uh, I am going to try again, and I love the space. You know, not playing. Get a, you get awards for not playing. play G sharp over F sharp because I'm excited. It does not sound good when I go high on the F sharp. See, that's the thing. When you try stuff and it doesn't work, just don't do it again. That's my advice.
Okay, I loved that. The end could certainly be better. Let me just search for an ending. Uh, let's see what happens. Well, I'll get in on the entire five chord sequence. Um, would have been great if it were Prince, but it was me and it was not the right chords. Let's try again. And that is out of pocket. Okay, so this is the nuts and bolts. This is the reality. Keep that because it was decent, and I'm gonna get this end right. I gotta find something for the end. Okay, that works, but it sounds a little bit harsh. How do I deal with that? Okay, I'm gonna turn down the top end on the amp, and then what if I turn on the pog, and what if I turn on a substantial amount of delay through the eventide eclipse. Here we go. That actually worked great, you just couldn't hear it. So in Pro Tools, which is lovely, I can turn it up after the fact. Let's listen. Now that's what I'm talking about. When you try something and it works that well, it's worth all of the, the trouble. I mean, let's solo that. It's just, come on. Oof. I mean, um, the other thing that's always good to remember, I believe, well, I should look there and not there, but you guys are over here, so. I'm gonna just tur start turning things down a little bit. Okay, am I playing too loud again? Well, it just, we've, we're now in distorted. Okay, so what happens to me in Pro Tools also is I keep craving louder, so everything gets up, and all of a sudden I'm slamming the output of Pro Tools and the output of all my gear to the tippy top, and I don't hear it anymore because it, distortion just sounds great to me because it's all I've listened to since I was 12. Um, but Nigel is going to turn down the levels so that we're not getting the wrong kind of distortion. But I'm looking over here. Thanks so much, you guys, for showing up. This is really fun. Um, so anyway, let's see what's next here. So I love combining dry and wet sounds. I mean... It's like I earn my wet sounds by playing dry. And what I mean by that is, if I take it totally dry, you know, do something. Then I've earned the right to throw a bunch of wet effect stuff on it and do something maybe on the left side, okay. So I, if I had advice, I would say, do the dry stuff and do the wet stuff and separate it and you'll have the best of all guitar worlds. Let me look up here, what do we got? Yeah, we, I did a live stream test the other day and I looked at it, uh, well, we did a bunch of tests before doing this and the last one I did, it was like, okay, if I just relax and just talk about everything I do and the way I do it, then it'll be valuable to somebody. And so that's what I'm gonna do. What's a creative approach to solo writing? I tell you what, yeah, less ambience in the mix, more dry. Well, I mean, see, I'm just creating guitar parts. So uh, it's good to have both, really. Um, you don't wanna be totally bone dry. Uh, well, you do, actually. You wanna earn your effects by being bone dry by being austere, by having a guitar and an amp only, which is what this is. Oh, that's not what that is. But uh, the thing about this studio, I get some really negative comments once in a while, imagine that, uh, uh, about all this gear. 
it's available so I can use it when I need it, but, but what you're hearing right now, you're just hearing the guitar through a push pedal, which is the super clean by Exotic right now, into the divide by 13, goes downstairs into my vault through a 412, through a microphone and back. So there's nothing on it. So, you know, I have these people who, who do kind of get pretty uh, harsh about, well, it would, I, I can't even hear the guitar because it's uh, of all your gear. Well, this is just a guitar and an amp. And there's nothing better than that. Come on. But it's great to have all this stuff here so you can access it, access it immediately. The reason this cockpit was created is so that when I'm working under the gun for a client sitting across from me in the opposite chair and they ask me for something, there's no distance and no time between their request and my delivery. So if somebody wants a pog, I press a button. If the pog were sitting over there and I had to pick it up and wire it up, the session would go down, the confidence would go down, and it would, it's just not, you know, I had, to, I had to do this for a living for a long time, and everything, there's no time. When you're a guitar player and you're asked to do something, you have to deliver it immediately. Okay, so I'm gonna play some solos uh, because it'll be fun. But I have to get my bass back. Everything's back. Well, that's a problem because... Just do what you did. The group's on. Just go down. Go down. Hit the bass, or mute the bass. You do it. Is this the bass? I want the new song, basically. With all the... Not the old... See, that's the old song, Nigel. See, this is the part that we... We don't do live, but we're doing it live anyway. Oh no, don't do that. Put it back where it was and I'll, cause all the new stuff's down here. So let me unmute group two. That's the other thing about my sessions as I create, stuff just gets really messy. And I, un, it was unfair of me to ask him to jump in on this because I, I needed to be a man and do it myself. Okay, this will be my solo track. Okay, that's pretty dry. Let me go with that for a second, even though I want it to be wet because I want to have the, you know, the ease of delay and reverb and stuff. So let me try a dry solo. It affects the way you play. That's the thing. The tone dictates your style much of the time. It's the truth. I've earned a little more. I'm going to step on one more pedal so it's a little more gainy and a little fatter. How about that? And I'm gonna turn on a reverb pedal just so it's a little more forgiving. Should still sound the same in a way. Rather than evaluate that, which was not great, let me do a better one. Here we go. Okay, at least I got one riff in. Let's, I'm going to turn off pre-roll and let's listen to that first riff and talk about it. Okay, it's coming back a little softer. That means I have something funny in my monitoring. That I would stand behind because... Hey Nigel, I'm coming through two inputs. Can I, how do I? There we go. I did that. I put this, I actually have Pro Tools, Pro, 
Pro Tools 12 now, and it has input monitoring. I've lived without input monitoring for a long time. And so I had it coming through two channels, so if that ever happens to you, you hear it too loud, you have it going through two channels. Just find the one it's going through and turn it off. So let's listen to this. I really like this first row. The thing I like about it is it sounds clean, even though there's gain. And that reverb disappears in the track. That's the other thing about effects. When you do your effects, sometimes you think it's too wet, but then you hear it in the track and those effects get eaten by the drums and the bass and all the stuff around it. So what preamp are you using to get that great time, tone? Oh well, I don't know. The thing I like about this riff is it doesn't sound harsh. It sounds clean, even though there's a, quite a bit of gain on it. And some of the notes are soft and some are loud. But because the sound is somewhat compressed, they do read pretty even. If you look at the waveform, well, you can see some are softer. But that, that for me, that's, a, that's, that's good in soloing. If you strike some of the notes with heavy accents, some soft, uh, that's my favorite thing, rather than going. See the difference? I mean, that's, once in a while, that's what you want to do, but, but I like being loud and soft and, and kind of playing with that. So on goes the pre-roll. Let me try and do a second riff. And I'm going to do a double pre-roll, so we'll have to wait for it. But this way, I can hear the first riff and respond to it in a musical way, I would hope. That's not enough. And I didn't get the double pre-roll. So that goes to two, enter. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we're waiting too long. We are, we're waiting too long. So I'm gonna put the cursor here. Now there's that F sharp. I like what happened, but I still don't know how to negotiate. In the writing of the tune, I love where it goes to F sharp there but I don't know how to play through it, just being honest. Rick Beato would do it great, Sean Tubbs would do it great, a lot of our other buddies, but I don't know what to do there, but I'll figure something out. And even for me, going to the F sharp note doesn't quite work. I'm just gonna be fearlessly obedient Loyal to E minor. Let's see if it works. That worked. Sometimes, you know, sometimes if, if there's a chord change I'm not familiar with, I'll just land on the tonic. You know, if it's, if it's D flat minor seven with a flat five, I'll just go to D flat and kind of hang around there and figure it out. Other times, if that chord appears in the context of a minor key, I'll just stay in that minor key. That's what happened there. Just, just stay in E minor and ignore the chord. And that works sometimes. <laughs> Rub is great with E against F sharp. Okay, so what's next? And that's the other thing I talk about all the time is I love raking across the strings when I start a phrase because it gives it this gravity. Uh, I won't use the word gravitas because every time I do, it sounds really pretentious, but e gravity, when you go. And in order to do that, I have to palm mute over here. But it's become a really nice habit to have that, or, or it's like a, a thud in front of the first note of every phrase. So here I'm leaving spaces. If you look, this is something I'm proud of because like every guitar player, I have a tendency to do this, which means just play, just blanket the whole thing. So that's something I'm really trying to do these days is 
leave spaces and make it more like a conversation. But let's go over to where I blanketed it and see what we think. <laughs> That's not good. Let me try and redo it. And now I'm actually craving more gain. So I'm going to turn on the uh, trustworthy ODR1 and get more sustain. Go to the bridge pickup. Let's see what happens. Okay, I had to. I should have waited for the punch. This time I'll wait for the punch. Wait for the punch. That was a reaction to the simplicity that I've been using. Uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons. You know, if, if you're, you're going, I'm being tasteful, I'm hanging out, I'm being tasteful. You go, wait a second, people don't want me to be tasteful all the time. I don't want to be tasteful all the time. I need to go for it. Let me go for it again. Oh, but I'm a little loud in the track now because I added this gain. Always be sensitive to your volume in the track when you perform because if it's too low, you're going to hit the guitar too hard and you're going to get kind of a forced hard tone. You're going to hit the upper limit of everything. But if you're too loud in the track, you're going to get ahead of the drums. And I've been doing that all my life. I don't want to do it today. So. Not great. Try again. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I just step out of time and just play as fast as I can. The trick is the ending and the recovery, which there was pretty cool. Nah, it was not great. It, that's the hard thing. When you free yourself from time and just turn off your mind to play as fast as you can, the last note you play is where the rubber meets the road, shall we say. But let me try one more of these. Not great. OK, let's try again, because that was not great. Okay, so I think we've come to uh, near the end of this first live stream. I want to thank everybody. Uh, and I'm going to take this camera that's on this screen, and I'm just going to do a little tour of what's back here. What do you think, Nigel? Yeah, it has a battery. Just don't plug the power. Okay. I'll help you lift the... Okay, it has a battery. It's so I'll, i got to keep the uh, stream thing plugged in. Unplug the power. And... You can go, just go look at the monitor if you would, Nigel, and, and let me know if, or I'm, it's a little bit of a delay, so I'm looking at the screen right now. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Thank you. So th this is where I put all of my push pedals. Oh, and this actually does not exist, so this is a secret. <laughs> next year, that's next year, that one. Okay, so, uh, but you, you can live without it till then. It's okay. So I have the, th that's basically, oh, come on. Oh, because I'm looking at a delayed signal. Okay, I know what to do. I turn the screen towards me. Okay. It's always the first time for everything. Okay, so that's, that's been my favorite thing for a long time, this uh, Boost line driver. It's basically a microamp, and it was cleaned up uh, by Bob Bradshaw, and it's just like, like a cleaner version of the, um, What's it called? The microamp. And that I've used for years. And then the guys at Exotic sent me these two, and these are great pedals, super clean and super sweet. 
And then we go to the uh, secret pedal that you can't get, but it's okay, you can live without it. Tell it, tell it. And then when it comes, you won't be able to live without it. So there we have the Mostortion, which is the Nashville, uh, amazing Nashville uh, sound that has been cloned by my friend. Uh, it's called the Karma pedal. So, and there's other clones coming along too. Uh, and then there's the ODR one from the early 90s, which I recommend if you can find one. We look down here, my trusty ancient clamshell strobe tuner, okay? Move over here, we've been looking at the Pro Tools screen. Uh, if we look down here, we've got the Chandler line mixer, which is how I blend mic pre's and microphones. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on the rack, but we can mic pre's. I think you zoomed in a little bit. That a little too much? Okay, yeah, there we go, thank you, that's good. Okay, so now, the trick is, I'm gonna keep this cable plugged in, and I'm gonna. You, and Pete, it, I think it'd be hilarious and great if you showed them your entrance. Oh, nobody ever knows how I walk in here, and there is a place. It just gets con <laughs> concealed. So yeah, usually there's not a guitar there, uh, but that's where I walk in. It's just enough space to walk in, basically. And as you can see, I have a, a Marshall JCM 800 as a speaker stand. And I have this Dan Electro head as my mouse stand. That's been revealed before on YouTube. Uh, there's my Echo Park, which I use for endless delays. It's very musical. Cali 76, that's nice. All the Boss Tremolos are good. Uh, Dark World by Chase Bliss. What's this one called, Nigel? Uh, this thing's great. Uh, Infinite Jets, was this one called Falling Water or something? Uh, it says on it, Fairfield Circuitry. This is a really great analog-y uh, kind of chorus that doesn't sound like a chorus. Highly recommended. MXR Reverb, that's a great pedal. There's the Octaver, there's the old Vibrato. I'm sure the new one is great. I'd love to have the new one. I pulled out my random my Feftronics Randomatic the other day because uh, I, you know, I just, I probably would have sold it, uh, but I'm glad I didn't because it's a wacky sound. You don't need the, the Feftronics Randomatic, but I'm going to keep mine and use it someday. Uh, the Ox... <laughs> <laughs> the Ox is a great box. We'll, uh, we'll look at that another time. Uh, Trusty Park, Matchless. And that, you know the reason I did that right there? I took it out of the box. When I'm using a an amp that has the controls on the backside up here, I never end up using it because I never can see the controls. So... I thought, I'm just taking, I love this amp. This is an AC-15 that was made by Joe Morgan. And it sounds so good, but the only way I can see the controls is by unhousing it and, and having it raw. So let me show you the, the, the really the most unbecoming part of this whole thing. Down here on the floor, we have a, a ancient vintage whammy. We have a loop switcher there. We have the ventilator the new MXR looper that I'm going to demonstrate soon. And then in these drawers, we have other access to more pedals. Microsynth is over there, Pog is over there, and in these drawers I've got MXR flanger, um, other stuff, so more will be revealed. Oh, and then the volume pedals, two volume pedals. One is just for noise, and the other is before the delays. So if I'm doing a really noisy sound, I'll use this one, which is right before the amp, and I'll just hide them. I'm always hiding noise with volume pedals. It's just like this all the time. Because there's always some noise. Anytime you press on a pedal, there's noise, and you can hide it with a volume pedal. But that's right before the amp. Then the other volume pedal is before all the delays, so that when I use this Echo Park or any delay pedal, uh, it trails when I pull the volume pedal back, which is something we can look at on another live YouTube session. So thank you, everybody. One more time, there's a link below for a discount to the Masterclass. You're one of the Masterclass. You still get the 14-day free trial, so if you decide it's not for you, you are out. But that link is right below, and... You're on the oh. other camera. Oh. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, that link is right below, and it's only till Sunday night. Thanks so much, guys. This was fun. Can't wait to do it again, and I mean that. This is uh, it's just great to just hang it all out.